In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can leverage LangChange.js Unstructured I.O. as well as the OpenAI APIs to create a RAG system that will query a domain with a particular question that you have and then generate a response for you. I'm going to go through all the ins and outs, how to set this up, and it should only take us a few minutes to get everything going. The first thing that we're going to do is just create a brand new directory. If you just go ahead and npm init y, you can also use bun init y if you're using bun. And once that's all set up, we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to open up my package JSON. We're going to install these dependencies here. So you can either bun i all of these dependencies or similarly npm all these different dependencies. Once we have that, we're going to touch a couple files. So if we just go touch index.js and then you can also, while you're in here, do a .env and just create our JavaScript file as well as our environment variables file. We're going to be using two API keys. We're going to be using the OpenAI API. So in this example, we're just going to be leveraging the GPT 3.5 example. You can always swap this out to GPT 4 if you like, but it should really only cost a couple of pennies to set up and run this example a handful of times. In terms of unstructured IO, there is a hosted version that you can pay for, but I'm going to be showing you how to get started with their free tier. So just head to the links within the .env here. I'm going to put the links to this within the description of the video within a repository that you can go ahead and pull down as well if you'd like. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to import all the dependencies that we're going to be using. Once we have our environment variables all loaded up, next we're going to set up our configuration object. This is going to be where we pass in the domain that we want to query as well as the actual question for that domain. The next thing that we're going to set up are some global variables as well as a function that will log out each step that we're on as it iterates through the application. So it's going to tell you step by step everything that's going on. Once you're comfortable with this approach, you can go ahead and tear out this function and all the, and this is really just to get you comfortable with what the application is actually doing. And then the performance, it's really just going to show you if you run into bottlenecks or things are taking a particularly long time, you can go ahead and start to isolate which step is really causing the lag within your application. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to wrap our application within a main function. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to log out that we're starting our main function. From there, we're going to initialize our OpenAI embeddings. Here, this is where we're going to be passing in within our OpenAI API key. And then we're going to just log out everything. So once we have that all logged out, we're going to go ahead and perform a simple get request to the domain. So there, we're just going to go ahead and get that raw HTML from the page. And then we're just going to create a simple caching directory. And then we're going to store that file within this directory here. Then next, we're just going to log out that it's been checked or created if it wasn't already created. Then from there, all that we're going to do is we're going to create the path for where we save out the HTML. Once we have that path, we can go ahead and write out our cached HTML file. So from there, what we're going to do, we're going to log out once again. Next, we're going to set up the unstructured loader. And what this loader will do is it will take our HTML file, we'll send it to the unstructured IO API, and then it will return a response in JSON with a ton of helpful information. It will go ahead and parse that document for us and give us a ton of different metadata and tags that we can feed into our vector storage. Once we have that set up, we're going to go ahead and convert that data. We're just going to do a little bit of parsing. We're going to include the page contents and the metadata. Now, these are going to be the values that we ultimately feed within our vector storage. Next, we're going to go ahead and generate our embeddings and create a vector store locally. So HNSW lib is a way that we can create these vector stores locally and just save them to our machine. Then the embeddings process, that's going to be querying the OpenAI embeddings API, and it's going to return numerical representations of the similarity between different items. So if you're not familiar with embeddings, I would encourage you to take a look at other videos on how it actually works, but essentially that's how it works in a nutshell. So once that's all set up, we're going to go ahead and log out again. Then we're going to set up what is known as a QA chain. So we're going to go ahead and declare clear the model that we want to use. You don't necessarily need to use OpenAI models if you don't want to. You could use Anthropic, you could use Cohere, you could use local models, open source models, whatever you want. So you can go ahead and decide on which model you'd like to use for something like this. Now, once that's declared, you can create your retrieval QA chain. Now that's going to accept the model, the vector store as a retriever. Then this last key within the object, return source documents. This is going to be the way that you can return the metadata from the response if you need it. So say if you need something like annotations, this is the way that you could potentially do that type of thing. So then from there, we're just going to log out once again. Then we're finally actually going to run the chain. We're going to pass in the query that's within our config. So just just to remind us, our query is what is the second story on Hacker News? And then we're going to go ahead, log out that the execution timing ended. 
and then we're finally going to run our main function. So if I just go ahead and run this and I say fun index, you'll see that what it does, it's going to log out every single step. A lot of them are very quick and happen right after one another. What the key chain is doing is if I scroll back to the top here is, is it embeds this line here. So it's going to return a numerical representation of this question. And then based on the top results from that comparison, it's going to go ahead and return those results. Once those top results have been returned, it's going to go ahead and feed that into GPT 3.5 at that point. And then that's how we get our response back. So we see that the second story on Hacker News is titled Hard Drive LEDs and Noisy Machines. So this is just one way that you can use Langchain. Obviously, you could wrap this with MC and Express Server or something like that if you'd like. But otherwise, if you find this video useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And otherwise, until the next one.